Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to editorial analysis of Shankara AS Academy. Today's date is 12th of September 2024. Now let us see the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. This first article we are going to see about the changes that has to be done in three different E's and in the second article we shall see some of the regional disparities in the mains perspective. So without much delay let us get into the news article discussion. Look at this news article. This article talks entirely about the startup ecosystem in India, the challenges faced by the startups and some of the way forwards. One of the important way forwards suggested by this editorial is focusing on three E's. Here the three E's include education, employment and entrepreneurship. So let us see about them in detail from the mains perspective in this news article discussion. Now before that we shall see about India's startup ecosystem. Some of such digital innovation include UPI, digital payment, telecommunication and e-commerce. India is projected to be a global economic bright spot with a nominal GDP of 3.9 trillion by 2024. So, it will be continuing be the fifth largest economy in the world by 2024. So, this is what we have to remember about India's current startup ecosystem trend. Now, let us see some of the insights. Government has actually contributed a lot to this growth and even the Department of Promotion of industry and internal trade they have recognized startup being supporting over 15.5 lakh direct jobs in indian economy so government has taken a proactive role in education by integrating education with innovation and it is also focusing on skilling students for new age technologies like artificial intelligence robotics mechatronics and etc and when it comes to entrepreneurship india is leading in startup numbers and unicorns here unicorn or nothing but the privately owned startups that has a worth of 1 billion dollars and not being listed in the stock market. Only those kinds of privately owned startups are named as unicorns. India currently registers one unicorn in every 20 days. Just look at the numbers. And these startups and unicorn has actually created 4.66 lakh new jobs in 2023 alone. And many universities, they are also promoting innovation and entrepreneurship culture. This is offering incubation and funding support to any budding startup. Then when we talk about employment, these startups, they are expected to contribute to GDP from 4% to 6.8% in the near future. So even though government play a proactive role and even though when startups they have contributed to entrepreneurship culture, enhancement of education and employment, there are two important challenges that hinders in reaping the benefit offered by all these changes. The first challenge is the lack of focusing on systematic approach to increase employability by integrating academia with industry. So there is a lack of systematic approach that actually integrates the academia with industry which is again hindering the employability of any educated Indian. And again yearly 1.5 lakh new entrepreneurs needed to be created to achieve the economic growth that we envision. However, to solve these challenges itself there are certain challenges. Firstly, the gap between the skilling and the employability. Secondly, there is limited early stage funding outside urban hubs. This actually leads to regional disparity due to the concentration of industries in a particular region. Thirdly, there are regulatory and compliance burden. For example, complex tax regulation and lengthy business registration process actually hinders ease of doing business in a particular region. Then there is IP protection challenge. Here IP is nothing but intellectual property rights. The process to attain IP is actually lengthy and bit costly. Apart from this, there is a lack of infrastructure, both digital and physical infrastructure connectivity issues. And finally, there is high competition, especially among the established corporations and international players. So these are all certain challenges that hinders the startups in India. However, there are notable government initiatives. Let us see them one by one. The first one is the Atal Innovation Mission. See, under this particular mission, both innovation and entrepreneurship is fostered in the school level itself. If you are asking how, the Atal Tinkering Lab or the ATLs and Atal Incubation Centers, AICs, these centers 
and labs it will be introduced at the school level itself where the students will be inculcated or incubated with entrepreneurship knowledge and proper funding is also provided to address the grand challenges in achieving innovation. The second notable scheme is the Digital India Initiative by Meiti. This mission focuses in transforming India into a digitally empowered society. A very good example for this is the Bharat Net for broadband connectivity. Here this mission aims to give connectivity to 2.5 lack of people in rural area through digital connectivity this not only improves the digital literacy but also provides access to digital services now the third important scheme is the make in india scheme by ministry of commerce and industry this particular scheme promotes manufacturing and startups in related sectors and it also simplifies processes for businesses so these are all some of the government initiative when it comes to startup in india now let us see some of the way forwards to address all the challenges that we saw so far. The first way forward is to strengthen education system with entrepreneurship and innovation in higher education institution courses. Secondly, by fostering innovation ecosystem through research commercialization and creating a pipeline for startups. So when research is commercialized, the economy will see more innovation and that can be implemented in startups. So government should ensure this pipeline is provided to the entrepreneurs. Thirdly, the government should focus on job creation in high skilled sectors especially through AI and digital technologies and finally India should leverage digital infrastructure this will provide access to global tech hub and investment destination so these are all some of the way forwards that can be done to address all the challenges faced by startups in India so we have a main question with respect to the discussion let me reroute the question for you skill development programs have succeeded in increasing human resources supply to various sectors in the context of the statement analyze the linkages between education skill and employment so you can write an answer by seeing our discussion and post it in the comment section so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article this news article talks about the regional disparity within the states in india the author of this article states that from manufacturing to services consumption wealth and growth are skewed towards southern and western india the author of this article also quotes an example of andhra pradesh and bihar the per capita income of andhra pradesh is four times higher than bihar so if this space continues even after a decade bihar could not outcompete andhra pradesh per capita income the in interesting fact to note here is that andhra pradesh has the lowest interesting fact to note here is that andhra pradesh has the lowest per capita income when compared to other richer southern states so this is what the author of this article is talking about so in this news article discussion let us see about the challenges in attaining regional equality and what are all the way forwards to those challenges in the mains perspective so let's start with the challenges see the first important challenge is unequal economic growth pattern see first thing is so when we talk about growth pattern first we have to talk about the concentration of industries the industries are mostly concentrated in southern and western states and states like maharashtra Gujarat and Tamil Nadu, they are getting benefited from foreign direct investment, FDI, IT services and infrastructure when compared to other states in India. Secondly, there is a lack of diversification in agriculture, especially in northern and eastern states. So, this automatically reduces productivity because the land holdings itself is fragmented and there is lack of irrigation infrastructure as well. So, just see here, there is a concentration of industries in one particular region and there is lack of diversification of crops in another particular region. This itself is causing the disparity. Now, the second thing is the infrastructure deficit. There is poor connectivity in northern and eastern states. There is also lack of physical infrastructure due to the difficulty, due to difficult terrains. Also, there are energy and power shortages. Even if you construct hydroelectric power plants, frequent avalanches and landslides actually hinders the infrastructure development in the in these regions we even have pm gati shakti and bharatmala project to improve connectivity but the implementation is 
quite slower than we expect. Now, the third important challenge is low human development indices. The education and skill gap in northern and eastern states are, are higher when compared to other states. And the health deficiencies actually reduce the enrollment in education and it is also increasing the dropout rate. So, the lower human development indices is the third important challenge. Fourthly, demographic pressure. See, the southern states, they have stabilized their population. But when we compare it with other regions in India, they have huge number of population. So, even if the particular state produces a lot, it has to divide it among the population where each will get a minimal share. So, this is the very biggest challenge and there is also urbanization challenge as well. This unplanned urbanization is increasing the slum level, again impacting the sanitation and actually reducing the human development indices. So, both these are interlinked. That is why I am making a stress over here. So, due to high population, there is a reduced resource allocation. Due to reduced resource allocation, there is reduced human development indices. So, these are all certain challenges in addressing income inequality. Now, let us quickly go through some of the government efforts taken to address the inequality. See, Niti Aayog's aspirational district program is a very notable program. Under this program, Certain districts were chosen for integrated development. The required fund is also allocated for the integrated development. So, this will bring in the availability and accessibility feature into all the poorer districts where the growth should actually happen. So, the aspirational districts program is the first important step. Secondly, 14th and 15th financial commission has made recommendations to allocate higher resources for states which have higher population and income distance. Thirdly, there are schemes like PM Gati Shakti, Make in India and Skill India. They actually provide the interconnectivity and the interoperability between the schemes and they actually promote employment and education in a particular region. Moving on, let us see the way forward to address all these challenges. See, first way forward is to bring in inclusive economic growth. This can be done by decentralizing industries in in the weaker this can be done by decentralizing industries and focusing more on regions where the industries are in very minimal level there even PLA scheme can be expanded and the local SMEs can be supported through policy formulation secondly infrastructure development we have to speed up the process under Bharat Mala and Sahar Mala projects to improve the connectivity and we have to invest in renewable energy sources especially wind energy, solar energy, tidal energy and etc. Thirdly, we have to expand the digital infrastructure for example Bharat Net. This will even help in the penetration of e-commerce websites. So, ultimately the trail will improve in the non-connected region itself. Thirdly, we have to improve the human capital development by improving education under Samagra Siksha scheme and we have to strengthen the Skill India mission with region, with region specific vocational training. Apart from this, we have to enhance the health services as well. This can be done under the Aishman Bharat scheme. Finally, government should ensure the ease of doing business. For this, government should reduce corruption, improve bureaucracy, simplify regulations and continue monitoring programs. So, these are all very important facts that you have to remember with respect to regional disparities and how to address these disparities. So far, we saw about an uh, example for regional disparity. What are all the challenges in achieving regional equality? Then we saw some of the way forward in addressing these challenges. So, we have a main question here. Discuss the key challenges contributing to income inequality between Indian states. Suggest measures that the government can take to promote balanced regional development and reduce these inequalities. So, you can write an answer based on the discussion that we made and you can post it in the comment section for peer review. So, with this we came to the end of the newspaper analysis. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. So, thank you so much for listening.